if you look up at the night sky, you may think that space is pretty empty, right? But check this out. This is a map of some of the debris that's orbiting Earth right now, some 10,000 tonnes of it. As we make more trips into space and begin deploying fleets of satellites, the challenge of avoiding those leftover bits of debris is becoming harder. And recently, that problem got worse. In November, Russia tested an anti-satellite missile that created a cloud of over a thousand pieces of traceable debris. It caused astronauts on the ISS to have to shelter. We were recently informed of a satellite breakup and need to have you guys start reviewing the safe haven procedure. This irresponsible act endangered the satellites of other nations. As space gets busier, it's also getting messier. So to try and make it safer and easier to operate in, some are trying to clean it up. We're here to remove those satellites. But how do you do that? How do you clean up the thousands, if not millions of pieces of trash that we've left orbiting our planet? Well, I've been on a mission to find out more. So grab a dustpan and brush, let's go. Now you may be thinking, why should I care about space debris if I'm not in space? But having some 36,500 pieces of junk, bigger than 10 centimetres, whizzing around the planet at thousands of miles per hour, doesn't just create a problem for astronauts. It can create problems for us down here too. After all, we use satellites for everything from weather to communications to GPS. And if they go down, it can create a huge problem. Those satellites are constantly having to maneuver to avoid potential collisions with orbital debris. Brian Whedon is Director of Program Planning at Secure World Foundation, a non-profit think tank that advises policymakers and industry on space sustainability. The majority of the weather satellites and the satellites we use to observe the Earth and monitor climate change are located in low Earth orbit, and that's some of the most congested areas. That problem is compounded when pieces of debris smash into other pieces of debris, creating many more smaller pieces of debris. It's something known as Kessler syndrome, and it could mean that in the future, there are fewer safe spaces to operate satellites. Over time, as debris gets worse, it may be too risky to operate satellites in certain orbits. And that may mean we forego some of the benefits that we currently get today. Brian also told me that the cost of avoiding space debris may mean that some future space projects never get off the ground. So why has nobody really done anything about this yet? Well, part of the reason is, until recently, nobody had to. See, most of the rules around what you can and cannot do in space come from this 1967 UN treaty, which basically says that each country retains ownership and liability for anything it sends into space, commercial or private. But there's no real mention of having to clean up afterwards. To fill in the gaps around managing debris, in 2001 the US adopted a best practice around orbital debris. Now, with space getting even busier, government agencies like the FAA are working on their regulations and closer aligning them with that standard practice. We're actually getting close to the point where we will see more commercial launches on an annual basis than what we were accustomed to seeing over the course of about a decade. In March this year, the FAA brought in tighter regulations for commercial spacecraft like SpaceX, Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin around collisions and debris generation during takeoff and re-entry. And now it's looking at ways to make sure that anything that the US sends up into space can be safely removed from orbit. So the idea, which we hope to uh, be ready to propose in spring of 2022, is to make sure we're not creating unnecessary debris that would inhibit future space operations, and that we have means to take care of what is placed into orbit. But creating regulations that prevent adding more debris only really solves part of the problem, and doesn't really address what's up there right now. So how do you deal with that? Well, ideas around how to remove debris have been floating around for years, much like the debris itself. Many of them involve using satellites with nets, arms, or even harpoons to grab the debris. And now, some of those ideas are starting to become a reality. Astroscale is a startup that plans to deploy satellites that can dock with pieces of debris to deorbit them. They're currently testing a satellite in space that they're using to dock with a fake bit of debris. Through a series of separating them, docking again, so dockings and undockings, we mature a lot of the key technology needed to actually capture this space junk in future. Right now, the company is testing its ELSA-D servicer, which can only dock with prepared debris that has this dinner plate size magnetic plate installed. And it has to be installed on debris before it becomes debris. It's a small, very lightweight plate that you fit uh, to future customer satellites that are going to launch. But the company plans on developing ways to capture debris that doesn't have that plate installed, and say they'll be running tests for that by the middle of the decade. The European Space Agency also has plans. 
It has commissioned Swiss startup ClearSpace to deorbit part of a rocket that has been orbiting the Earth since 2013, using its ClearSpace 1 satellite. But a bit of perspective here. Those plans are only set to remove a handful of pieces of space debris over the next four years, and that's out of the thousands of pieces that are up there. So even if new regulations curb the amount of junk that we're dumping in orbit, it could be years before space gets a little emptier again. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in the next generation of space travel, then check out the work by my colleague Micah Maidenberg. I've left a link below. And as always, if you're interested in the future of how we might be getting from A to B, then don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.